Hi, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the oscilloscope. You're going to be using this uh, wonderful instrument in the lab. It is a very commonly used instrument in electrical engineering measurement systems. And uh, you need to know something about it. You will find all the features that are in an oscilloscope on many other pieces of equipment. So there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to be able to use in time to come. I'm going to divide the uh, face of the screen that's before you into a number of different areas. And first of all, we'll talk about the display. This area over here is the display. It shows you uh, the signal, a picture of the signal that comes in on the channel. And so this particular scope has one, two, three, four channels. So it's a four channel oscilloscope. This is where the input section goes in. And whatever electrical signals come in on these particular uh, connectors, uh, gets displayed on the screen. Now, how it's displayed on the screen depends on uh, a couple of other features. Number one, we have the uh, channel uh, sensitivity. Uh, this, these knobs control the uh, vertical sensitivity of the scope, and so therefore if we adjust this, we can see that the display uh, gets bigger or it gets smaller. And so it's the same display, we're just showing it on a different scale such that we can see it more effectively or we can uh, see uh, the tiny features that we're interested in. And so these are the, uh, the vertical axis controls. Uh, up in here is what we call the time-based controls or the horizontal axis controls. And again, if we adjust these, we see that the waveform changes in its uh, duration. We just happen to be looking at either more or less of the waveform uh, as we change those uh, controls. And then finally, in this corner here, we have what's called the trigger section. The trigger section determines how and when the, d the display is first uh, shown to us and uh, there is a trigger event. That trigger event is the event that initiates the display and uh, we select that trigger event by looking at these controls and we end up with there's a little uh, red or green triangle uh, on the face of the oscilloscope and there is a little trigger uh, marking and at the intersection of those two that is the event that causes the display to start its uh, progression across the face of the screen and we, we learn uh, what the signal looks like. All right, so let's go back and look at each of those. We'll start with the trigger events. The trigger events, if we push the uh, edge uh, button, we'll get uh, a couple of menus down here. The first menu is the source and if we select the source menu, uh, we can find that it comes from channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4, etc. Uh, each of these channels and we can decide which one of these channels we want to do the triggering event on. So let's have a look and we'll, we'll switch that to uh, channel 2 and you'll see that uh, as we're triggering on channel 2 uh, there is no signal on channel 2 and so therefore there's nothing there for it to initiate a trigger signal and so therefore the waveform just uh, blurs by. We are not focused on that waveform at all and so therefore we need to take our trigger, our trigger edge, and we need to select it to channel 1 and we'll adjust that and once we select our trigger to channel 1, there's a sig signal on channel 1, we'll get a nice clear signal. Well, that is the source of our triggering. Uh, the second menu item here is the slope of the triggering and if I change that I can change it from a rising edge to a falling edge and you can see that the screen adjusted such that at this location underneath the little red or green triangle depending on what scope you're using this is a falling edge or if I switch that back I can get it to a rising edge so that the, the rising edge is here. All right, so we can, we can give a um, uh, a source, which of the channels are we going to take our signal from. We determine whether the slope is a rising slope or whether it's a falling slope. And then we can set the level. So the trigger level, this little line that you can see, I can adjust the trigger level. And as I adjust the trigger level beyond the level of the signal, it has no signal for which to trigger on and therefore we just see a, a blur of a signal. We'll bring that trigger level down and we can trigger on that point right there. 
or we can bring the trigger level down and we can trigger on that point right there. If we take the trigger down too far, again, it has got nothing to trigger on and so therefore we don't see a stable trace of our oscilloscope. So triggering has uh, three pieces of information. Number one, what channel are we going to use? Channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four. Triggering information depends on a slope. Are we using a positive slope or are we using a negative slope? And trigger information requires a level. What level are we triggering on? And if you take those three pieces of information, you can pick any point on any waveform and use that as your trigger event. So what happens is we take a trigger event at this location and we start to display the signal. We go back until we get another of the same trigger events and we display a little bit before and a little bit after that trigger signal. A little bit before, a little bit after, a little bit before, a little bit after. And if the trace, the signal, doesn't change, then what we're doing is writing one on top of the other, the same signal over and over and over again, and to our view, it looks like a very stable trace of, in this particular, in this particular case, a uh, square wave. All right, so that's the trigger events. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the more detailed features of that later, but that's the basic trigger function. Uh, the next function that we need to look at is the, uh, is the uh, time base. The time base is what controls the length of the time it takes for this trace to go across the screen. Right. Um, in this particular case, uh, all the numbers are given to us. You probably can't see it very well, but right in there, there's a little number that says 20 microseconds per division. And so each one of these graticule squares is 20 microseconds across. Sorry, 200 microseconds across. So there's 200, 400, 200, 400, 200, 400, etc. All right, so we can measure uh, just exactly how long that pulse is. All right, and so we can uh, adjust that. If we change the time scale, we change that from 200 to 100 microseconds per division. This has got one, two, three, four, and a little bit. So it's about 400 microseconds long. Right? So we can shrink that down. There's 200 microseconds. There is 500 microseconds. There is one millisecond. So you can, uh, again, you can get an idea that the, uh, the width of the screen uh, in terms of seconds is determined by the time base control. This controls the horizontal axis this controls the vertical axis. The vertical axis has the same kind of sensitivities and right up in the upper left hand corner this says one volt per division. In this particular case this is one, two and a half. There's uh, uh, two and a half volts uh, is, the, is the, uh, uh, the voltage of this particular square wave. All right, and so we can adjust that down if we go to two volts per division. If we go to 5 volts per division if we go to uh, 10 volts per division. Note when we're at 10 volts per division, uh, the trace is smaller than the trigger level and we lose our triggering. So we adjust that back up again. All right, there's 5 volts per division, 2 volts per division, 1 volt per division, and there's a half a volt per division. And so it goes off screen and we can't tell where it is. All right, so um, we can turn a second channel on and by turning these uh, various uh, controls on. Uh, we can adjust the position of where that channel is by either uh, by using the position control knob or we can adjust its sensitivity. All right. In this particular case there's nothing on channel 2 and so this, the, the line is just a flat line. Uh, but we can adjust either one of those up or down by adjusting the uh, position control knobs. Both of those have a little marking on them, and so if we want to put uh, the two channels on the same location, we just put them over top of each other, and away it goes. All right, so we have uh, the basic functions. Here is the display screen. 
we see the picture of whatever the electrical signal coming in is. Uh, we uh, also have the uh, time base that controls the width of the screen and how that can, it, it works. We have the uh, vertical sensitivity that controls the height of the screen and it shows us how big the signal is. And then we have the trigger events. The trigger events are what starts the display of the screen and uh, with understanding of those basic functions, we have a pretty good understanding of how the scope works. All right, thanks. See you later.